I thought I would do a short series of videos on the history of computer viruses and to some extent how the overall uh, antivirus or anti-malware industry has evolved in general. Uh, and in this first video, what I'll do is I'll talk about the, the early years. Uh, so to begin with, the concept of a computer virus is actually quite old. Uh, there was a famous mathematician and computing pioneer named John von Neumann, and he wrote a paper that was called, and I'll write it down here, The Theory and Organization of Complex Automata. So theory and organization. organization of actually complicated automata. Complicated automata. And it was in this paper that he actually posited the original notion of self-replicating programs, and, and we now call those things viruses, but at that time it was meant uh, more out of academic interest than anything else. Okay, and, and basically he, in this paper, really talked about the idea of a computer program that could possibly replicate. And, and since then, uh, there have been some proof of concept viruses, and, and these were written mostly for the sake of intellectual curiosity. Uh, now, around 1984, uh, Fred Cohen, and this is a, he was actually at the time a, uh, a graduate student at, at, uh, under, and he was being supervised by Len Edelman, I'll talk about this in a moment, but basically Fred Cohen was the first person to really go ahead and study computer viruses in, in their own right as, as an academic topic, and he conducted this first rigorous academic study of these types of self-replicating programs, and, and in his mind, a computer virus is something that could attach itself to some other program. And as I mentioned, his advisor was Len Edelman at the time, and Len Edelman is actually the one who coined the term computer viruses, which uh, was meant to kind of show the parallels between biology and what Cohen was actually studying at that time. Now, Edelman himself, you may have recognized his name, he's actually really well known uh, in both the mathematics and computer science community. He's actually, uh, if, you, if you've heard of the RSA crypto system, so RSA stands for Vest, Shamir, and Edelman. RSA is actually the a crypto system that's at the heart of, of e-commerce transactions today. It's, it's a very fundamental uh, contribution to computer security uh, in general. Now, Cohen actually defined a computer virus as, quote, a program that can infect other programs by modifying them to include a possibly evolved copy of itself. Uh, and really, the, the idea here by this definition is that, you know, you, you would, uh, viruses are not going to be standalone programs. The idea that you might have a legitimate program, and imagine you've got a program that's got some legitimate uh, code in there. And what the virus is going to do is actually typically copy itself into that program and essentially be uh, it's a parasitic infector. It's going, to, it's going to host itself in that program, so it's a parasite. And then the idea is that if uh, there's a new file in the file system, or maybe a file hole that appears because uh, uh, somebody put in a floppy disk, then the virus will copy its code uh, into the new file. And, and maybe in the process, maybe it'll make some small modification to its own code to make it maybe possibly harder to detect, or really to, to, um, uh, to, to make it more clear that in, in many ways that this is an example of something that's an analog to biological viruses which do mutate uh, when they you know, infect different people. Now, Fred Cohen did develop some proof of concepts of, of these original viruses to kind of talk about what he was, what he was studying. But the first real in the wild, in the wild virus that actually affected personal computers or PCs was a virus called Brain, and this was the uh, uh, first PC virus that's in the wild. So this was not really a proof of concept for academic reasons, but it was actually something that was meant, and it, it, at the time it actually wasn't meant uh, for uh, you know, any type of malicious gain, but it really was meant as a mechanism for uh, anti-piracy, believe it or not. Uh, and it was invented by uh, two Pakistani programmers, their names were Basit and Amjad Iqbal, it was actually done in 1986. And uh, their real, their mechanism, their goal at the time was actually anti-piracy. They had some, I believe it was uh, medical software they'd written and they wanted to make sure that that medical software could not be pirated. And they wrote Brain and uh, you know, it was, had all these, these properties where it could replicate and copy itself and it was actually pretty hard to detect. It had some kind of rootkit-like capabilities. It was fairly sophisticated for, for that time. And what was interesting is that to their shock, Brain actually ended up propagating around the world. It actually spread from floppy disk to floppy disk. I mean, this was before the internet was really popular. And, and at that time, people propagated files in general to floppy disk. It actually went all around the world. And you can actually find more information about Brain online. It's now kind of really interesting from an overall historical perspective. Now, now as I mentioned, this particular virus was not malicious. It actually was, you can, you can think of it essentially as a, uh, there was no malicious intent. 
a no overt malicious intent. It really was uh, meant as a copywriting mechanism. But as you can imagine, it wasn't too long after that that we began to see more computer viruses in the wild that actually did have malicious intent. And these viruses were not, um, I guess, it, they, they, I, mean, I would say maybe they were technically sophisticated, but their technical sophistication was really geared around infection and propagation. And as you'll see in some of the later years, and I'll do some subsequent videos to talk about the later years, technical sophistication was really geared, um, ultimately technical sophistication was really geared around how to evade detection. But the early viruses were not designed to be difficult to detect because there was no antivirus industry at that time. And in fact, you know, typically these viruses would actually announce their presence on your system. And, and some of them would even display uh, text on your screen. They, they would put on graphical displays. Others might even play noise and music. And so you didn't have to be technically savvy to figure out that you had actually been infected. And at that time also, it was pretty easy programmatically to find these threats. And in fact, most viruses at that time contained some fairly obvious strains, and many actually still do, that you could use as a telltale sign for detection. Um, and so let, you, let me show you a hex dump of, of a, a virus called Stoned. And I've uh, put that down here. Here's a, a hex dump of a virus that uh, was called Stoned. And this actually happened to be the first virus I'd ever gotten infected by. Uh, so it's called a Stoned virus. And uh, what you'll notice when in, in you look inside the, the main body of the program is that the string, your PC is now stoned, appears as part of the hex dump. It's, it's actually in the binary itself. There's no obfuscation, no polymorphism or packing or metamorphism and anything of that nature. Virus fighters at that time were simply not concerned with evading detections. Now, as you can imagine, you've got a new problem here in the form of computer viruses, and, and there appear to be some fairly easy technical solutions for detecting these threats, but namely by looking for these types of strings. Uh, and, you know, as you can imagine, you know, given uh, a technical solution to a problem that was becoming more and more widespread, that led to the birth of the antivirus industry. Uh, and I do also want to mention that uh, malicious software as a whole now includes many other varieties of, of threats. It's not just limited to these self-replicating and parasitic infectors that we call viruses. The industry has actually had to evolve to deal with uh, what I would say is a large panoply of threats rather than just garden variety computer viruses. And what I'll do is I'll talk about some of those threats and, and some of those concepts in future videos. But I'll stop right here in this video and, and um, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you join me for subsequent videos on the history of computer viruses. Thanks a lot.